as we move on to this painting called The Oath of the Horatia by Jacques-Louis David from late 1700s France, we see, again, a painting that shows a story that art, that the people of the time would have already understood. They understand that these three brothers are the princes of a great city. They're taking weapons from their father and are going out to fight to protect their city. Their city um, is under attack. And so we see the soft, curving, leaning lack of strength in the poses that these women and children on the right-hand side of the image are showing is very different from the hard angles, the geometric shapes, the triangles and right angles and lines and so forth of these brothers. Here we have a great illustration of how angular bodies that are in an active pose feel very different than bodies that have curves and leaning that don't have that sort of tension. So when you are making people in your own artwork, if you want them to feel powerful, give them right angles, make them upright and alert. And if you want them to feel powerless, make them weak, sitting, curving, leaning, not under their own strength. Now, in this image, we also see a couple of other things that we need to talk about. First, in addition to the two methods to create a sense of space that we've already talked about, that is having things that are close to us, like the man in the red cape, overlap things that are far from us, such as the pillar back here, and having things that are close to us start lower on the page, like, for instance, the feet of this man in the red cape, start lower than the, the bottom of this pillar. We also see a couple of other things. One, these brothers are lined up in order of height. Do you think they took the time to line up by height? Of course not. This is showing us an effect in art. This effect is that things that are far from us appear smaller than things that are close to us. So this brother who is both at his tallest, he's taller than either of the other brothers, and his feet are lower than either of the other brothers, and each one get receding in space, getting further away from us, fits into a smaller space than the brother that came before them. This matches with the overlapping and the other techniques that we've already talked about, but we can see that things that are close to us, like this brother, are bigger or appear bigger than things that are far from us, like this further away brother. Here in this painting by Pablo Picasso, we see four examples of how artists create a sense of space in their artwork. And I want you to notice all four of them as we are following along. These are the four techniques that you are going to use as well. So we see that overlapping objects, as we mentioned, this, the man in the foreground's knee is overlapping this girl's foot, showing that he is closer to us. Closer objects start lower on the page as well, so the block that the man is sitting on starts lower on the page than does the sphere that this girl is, sitting, is standing on. We see that distant objects, like the horse, or this mother and child, or this little dog, all have less detail to them. They also have less contrast. Notice the lights, especially in the mother and child, or the woman and child figure over here, the light colors are not that light. The darks are not that dark. If you compare them to this uh, figure in the foreground, this man here, with dark, dark shadows between his arm and his body, with light highlights where the light is hitting him brightly. And our final method, as we've already discussed, is that distant objects look smaller. This horse is probably a lot bigger than this man, certainly bigger than his face but it appears smaller because it's far away. So we have four methods through which we can create a sense of space, and you are going to use them yourself. As we look at these more recent examples, the left-hand side is a multimedia piece made with uh, some water-type translucent paints painted onto see-through material. And I like to show this one because even though we don't have every detail about the scene, the artists use really great attention and rec recreation of the body poses, which show us that we don't know what the woman is looking at, 
but she's spotted something when she's standing up and bent over slightly to look at the thing, and we can tell from her body language that she doesn't want to get too close to it. And then she crouches down, and touching the thing, whatever it is, as little as possible, she picks it up. Body language has done a lot to make this scene an interesting one. On the right-hand example, this is a digital painting. I like to show some digital artwork and also to point out a couple of things. The We don't know exactly what's happening in this scene, but the woman's facial expression, the angle that she's looking off at, the way that her torso makes an angle to her legs, which make you know that there's another angle between the upper and lower parts of the legs, all indicate that she's about to stand up and take off. She doesn't seem to be in a rush. We don't see a lot of tension, but we do have this curve in the back and those angles that we mentioned that suggests that she's going to stand up and walk away soon, which is matched by the angle that she's looking off at. It's also important to notice that some things won't follow all of the rules we talked about. These fish are flying in the air. It's a surrealist art piece. It's okay for them to fly. But when they're flying, because this fish starts so high on the page, is it extremely far away? No, it's flying. That rule about things that are far from us starting higher on the page than things that are close to us, that one can be tricky, so just keep an eye out. For this unit, we are trying to understand and apply proportion to make realistic human figures. We are trying to understand and apply grounds, which is a foreground where things are close to us, a middle ground where things are not so close, and a background where things are very far away. We create the sense of grounds by using those four techniques we just discussed. We're going to use figures in gestures with a scene or a setting that matches to tell a story. It doesn't have to be a whole long story. It could be as simple as Spider-Man is slinging web and about to swing through the streets of Manhattan. That's the scene that we see in this image on the right. We want to be able to recognize some historical and contemporary art that uses human figure to tell human stories, and we may end up mounting and displaying the artwork to create a powerful visual impact. We may end up skipping that learning goal depending on how the year progresses. Over the next few classes, I want you to be, or the next couple of weeks, I guess, I want you to think of a story or a scene you want to tell about. Think about a drawn or painted artwork that could include three humans or a sculpture that could have one or two humans. We'll talk more about specific goals and requirements a little later. We want then to make three compositional sketches exploring the scene that you might want to make. Once you've made three of those, you're going to pick one that you like, and you're going to make some gesture studies, finding people or photos of people in the poses that your characters will be in. And then you're going to study and make gesture drawings of those poses. Once you've got some gesture studies done and some compositional sketches done, then we're going to move on and hopefully combine those elements and ideas to make a unique, delightful work of art that focuses on the figure and tells a story.